Hello again, I'm John Terzak, and today I'm going to answer a fairly important question, which is how to clean and break down a whole tenderloin of beef. Now, it's, all, it's especially an important question if you want to pay half the price for your fillet steaks over the course of the year. So this is a six pound fillet that they call a peeled fillet, and I'm going to get it out of the package here. And we're going to see if we can reserve the blood that's in the package. And I'll show you a good use for that at the end of this. Let's see how much I have here. Okay, now let me rinse my hands off real quick, and okay, I'm going to break this down for you piece by piece. First, this is what's called the side strap, and this is a strap that runs along the side. This is a piece that's not considered to be, we're just going to cut that off, put a little pressure on it, and peel that back as we're cutting it off. In a few minutes, we're going to go back and we're going to trim all the meat out of this because it can be used for tenderloin tips. Now, on the bottom of the fillet, there's another piece of meat right here, which needs to come off, which is kind of like the lower strap of the tip of the tail. Okay, and this is great for brown stock and brown sauce stuff. On the back, there's a couple little extra pieces of fat, which I'm going to take off. And then right here, there's always a piece of silver skin right here, and I'm going to take that off. And that's more brown stock activity here. And there's a little piece of sinew here. We're going to take that off. And uh, any excess fat, we're going to strip right off by hand, like that. And there's was silver skin here, but it got cut off when this got removed from the animal somehow, which is fine. They come with all the silver skin on, or sometimes some of it's cut off like that. So I'm going to take the rest of it off, and keeping in mind that the name of the game here is not to remove a lot of meat, just the silver skin. So I'm pointing my knife upwards here as I go along. More stockpot stuff. Here's a piece of fat on this side. We're going to pull that off. This is called the head, or the Chateaubriand, of the filet. I'm just pulling these extra little pieces of fat off. You take them off as you see them. All right, let's get the rest of the silver skin off here. All the way down to here, the silver skin goes. Took too much off that time. And right in here, there's another little piece of silver skin here. And we're going to chip that out of there too. I got to tell you, I've probably cleaned, I don't know, at least a thousand of these things over the years. And uh, they're mostly the same, but every once in a while you get one that's shaped just a tiny bit different than the last one you worked on. So, we're going to divide this. This is basically cleaned right now. We're going to divide this into a couple different sections. We've got, this is the very tip here, so that would be, end up being one part of the tenderloin tips. These, the smaller end down here, this is where the tornadoes are typically cut from the fillet, and this is what you call the center cut. I specifically want the center cut from this particular fillet to make some uh, cured and air dried rajol for you on another day. So I'm going to cut out what I think is like a five ounce steak out of this end. We'll set that over there in the paper. Now I'm going to take this center cut, which is what we're going to be curing in another lesson. Nice. 
And this is the head of the fillet. We'll add a little bit more fat off of here. Now you could do all kinds of things with this head. For starters, this piece right here, I'm going to cut this off and include this into the tenderloin tip material, okay? And I'm going to cut the very end of this off also because it's kind of like a flappy piece and that's going to go into tenderloin tips. Now I've got a couple of pounds of meat here that I could do a number of steaks with. I can why don't we do this? Why don't we take, and instead of cutting it all the way through, I'm just going to cut it halfway through. Then I'm going to cut myself an 8-ounce steak out of there. Let me go down a little bit further. I'm going to cut about a 7-ounce steak out of there, or, or an 8. Then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to flatten this side out here a little bit some more tip meat. Then I'm going to cut another 8 ounce steak out of here. Now I got about 3 8 to 9 ounce steaks there and if I wanted to push it I could say I have 4 of those. So look at this. This is 4 8 to 10, 4 dinners and if this were cut into steaks I would say 5, 6, 7 dinners and then between this and this and this, I have eight dinners. So I have eight dinners. That's a lot of dinners from a fillet for the price that we're paying. Um, so the last thing we need to trim is this side strip here. And I'm going to do this by holding on to the silver skin and pulling the silver skin off of most of it. There's a part of this that can be a little gummed up with sinew and muscle meat here. But we're trying to get most of it out. And we got a little bit of scrap here. And we have a little bit more meat here. Maybe. No. This is as clean as it's going to get and that's more brown stock uh, material. Now see, this is the piece that I kind of pulled away initially. This is the meatiest part of the uh, side strip. Let's get the excess fat off of there. It's all got a little bit of meat attached to it, which means it's all good for brown stock. So you can buy one of these and portion it up the way you want, individually wrap them up and freeze them. And uh, if you buy any fillets, this is the way to do it. Unless you have money to burn, that's different. And I'd let somebody else do it. But if you want to be a cook and you want to know how to do things, this is something you need to know how to do. So there's that piece of side strap that's been cleaned, and there's another piece out of it. So let's just make some tenderloin tips out of that. Cut these any size you want, but I'm kind of cutting these in a kind of a standard size is good for pepper steak and beef stroganoff and things like that. Let's get the rest of these tips cut. So I paid about $12 a pound for this and I've got one, two, eight or nine dinners here. So I, I definitely got two dinners right there. And a small dinner here. Oop, there's a little bit more. So, there you have it. Four 8 to 10 ounce fillets, or 8 or 9 ounce fillets, one 5 to 6 ounce fillets, two tenderloin tip dinners, and one either roast for a roast tenderloin, or you could cut this into steaks again, or you could cut this into six five-ounce steaks or four-ounce steaks also. And then we have the scrap for the brown stock, which I'm going to freeze for a later use. So there, there you have it. That's a good, basic breakdown of the tenderloin of beef. If you want to save some money and you want to know how to cut meat, this is a good place to start.
coming back at you real quick. I forgot to tell you what to do with the blood. I turned around after I shut it off the video and there's the blood. So what is the blood really good for? What the blood is good for is storing the beef tenderloin tips in or freezing them in the blood. So there's a protein source that will help keep that meat particularly fresh. What I mean keep that meat, what I mean is if you took those tenderloin tips and plastic wrapped them and put them in your refrigerator without that blood, they've got three, four days worth of life on them in there, okay? In that blood, they have 10, 12 days of life in them. So if you don't want to freeze them, but you want to keep them really fresh and red, let's say you were making a steak tartare out of these, and you'd want them really, really red for that, so you'd want to soak them in the blood before you minced it or ground up the beef for the tartare. Uh, so there you have it. There's more of a completion of it there with the use of the blood.